Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Cedar Creek Community Church's midweek worship service, midweek worship and Bible study. It's me, Pastor Butler. I am so glad that you have joined me tonight for this midweek worship experience. So I pray that whenever you are watching, whether it's Wednesday night or Thursday night, we've got two opportunities for you to get this message. Just in case you missed it one night, I'm coming back to you another night. So I thank God that you decided to take out of your time. I know we all have busy schedules, but I think we all need some extra time with God. So I pray that you are blessed with whatever we do tonight, the prayer, the song, um, the study, that you are blessed tonight and that God truly comes into your house. Hallelujah. Because we're talking about praise and we know that he inhabits the praises of his people. So I pray tonight that this study, these scriptures, these songs, these prayers will invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit to come into your life, to not into just your life, but to come into your home and overtake you right now. And when you have his presence in your house, your whole atmosphere will change. So can we come on right now with this creative atmosphere of praise? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Come on. And while you're praising God, go ahead and share this broadcast with somebody. On the bottom of your screen, there's a share button. Go ahead and share this with somebody on your page. Type, send the link out to somebody, text somebody, call somebody, tell them, get online. Pastor is teaching. Amen. There is a word, especially all my Cedar Creek members. So every Cedar Creek member that is watching, make sure you text another Cedar Creek member and say, get online for Bible study. Get online for midweek service right now. You don't want to miss it. Amen. So come on, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Glory and honor. We thank God for keeping us. It's because truly God has kept us. Hallelujah. If you are watching this today, God has kept you. So that's a good place and a good reason to give God glory. So somebody come on and give God praise and say, Lord, thank you for keeping me. Hallelujah. He's a keeper, church. Glory to God. He's a keeper. So I just thank God for another opportunity to, to get in his word. I thank you for another opportunity to be with your people, God, whether it's by virtually or in person, we are still together in the name of Jesus Christ and by his spirit. So can you join me in prayer tonight? Hallelujah. Whatever your prayer request is, if you got something, just type it in the screen and just throw it out there in the atmosphere. And I believe the Lord and my spirit will catch it. And in the name of Jesus, we pray that it shall be done if it's in the will of God. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. Hallelujah. We praise your name. We give you glory. For truly you are God and you are sovereign it's nobody else but you, God. Hallelujah. Nobody that's in your place. God, we put you on top. Hallelujah. We let you know, God, that you are king of our life. We let you know, God, that you are Lord of our life. So we thank you tonight. Hallelujah. We glorify you and we magnify your name. Oh, it is good to give you praise. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you as we're studying more about praise and we're studying more about worship. Take us deeper, God, in worship. Hallelujah. And let our praise go higher. So we thank you tonight as we give you praise and we give you glory, God. We also ask God that you wash us cleanse with clean, wash us clean with your precious blood, your cleansing blood, your blood that still has power, your blood that still works. God, I thank you that your word says we confess our sins to you. You are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So right now, God, we confess our sins to you, God. Sins of omission and commission, things that we knew we did and even things that we did that we didn't know there was a sin. God, bring those to our minds so that we will not do them again, that we will strive to be better, God. We're striving for perfection. God, we may fall down, but we get back up again, and we continue to do what you have called us to do. So we thank you tonight for this time of scripture, God. So whatever's in me that's not like you, remove it right now, God, because I want you to, to speak through me, God. I want your people to feel your presence right now in their homes, in their offices, wherever they are. We ask that you move right now, Lord. Move by your power. Move by your spirit, God, as we open up these scriptures, as we speak your word, as we declare Declare your name as we give you praise. Lord, be please be pleased with our praise. Lord, please be pleased with our praise. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you and we praise your name right now. So, God, we ask that you have your way. Hallelujah. Have your way. Do what you want to do, God. Let this be a life-changing experience. Let this be something that never happened before, God. Let a word, let a, let a, let a scripture, let, a, let, a, let a, a thought or something come out, God, that will change a life, God, that will return our hearts back to you, that will make us praise you more, that will make us 
just worship your heart. God, so we thank you tonight. So speak right now, God. Speak in this place, God, through the prayer, God. Hallelujah. Through the song, God. Through the scriptures, through the spoken word, God. We thank you tonight. Oh, God, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. You get the glory tonight, God. You get the glory tonight. So whatever it is that the saints are dealing with, we say, Lord, have your way in our houses. Lord, have your way in our house, in our cars. Lord, have your way on our jobs. Lord, have your way in our finances. Lord, have your way in our bodies. Lord, have your way. God, let your will be done. Let your will be done. And we thank you and we praise you tonight and we give you glory. God, bless this nation. Bless this state. Bless this city. God, bless the people of the world, God. Oh, save them, God. Bring them back to a heart of God. Bring them back to a mind of God, a mind of Christ. And we thank you tonight because we know that you can do it. And God, again, we thank you for keeping us. Oh, God, you are a keeper. You said you will keep us in perfect peace and we keep our minds stayed on you. God, so right now our mind is on you. We are thinking about you. We are loving on you, God. We are considering your ways. God, we are remembering what you have done, God. We are thinking on your goodness, and as we think, we've got to thank you for all that you've done. So we say hallelujah. We say thank you, Jesus. We say glory to your name, God. We give you glory tonight, God. So if there's anything, God, that needs to be done in our lives, God, we have, we, we, we move ourselves out of the way and say, Lord, take over, hallelujah. Lord, you got free reign to do it right now in the name of Jesus we thank you and we praise you. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Speak tonight, God. Let somebody receive exactly what they need. Because you said you shall supply all of our needs according to the riches and glory which are in Christ Jesus. So right now, God, supply our need. Whatever the need is, meet it right now, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you. It is so. It is well and it's already done. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And everybody say amen, amen. Come on and give God glory. Come on and give God glory. Come on, can we have a little praise session? Hallelujah. Come on, can we have a little praise session right now? Can we praise God? Can we praise God? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I just want to praise you. I just want to praise the Lord. I just want to praise him because blessings, glory, and honor, they all belong to him. Anybody want to praise him tonight? So come on and open up your mouth and just cry it out right now. Lord, I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. Come on, give him glory. Anybody just want to praise you? Yes. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done, you've done for me. Come on, help me say, say blessings and glory and honor. They all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing. Come on, help me sing. You know this one. Hey, oh, said I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all. You've done, you've done for me. Hey, said blessings and glory and honor. They all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing. Hey, come on, give him glory. Hey. Forever and ever and ever for all you've done, you've done for me. Hey, blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing. Yes. Come on and give him glory tonight. Hey, I just want to, 
I just want to thank you forever and ever, Lord, and ever for all you've done, you've done for me. Yes, the blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. And honor, they all, they all belong to you. Say so blessings and glory. And honor, they all, they all. I got to give you blessings and glory. Oh, the honor, they all belong to you, God. Everything we have, we got to give it to you, Lord. Blessings and glory. I said, blessings and glory, Lord. And all of the honor, they all belong. Blessings and glory. You deserve it. You deserve it. Hey, hallelujah. You deserve the blessings and glory. You deserve the honor and praise. It all belongs to you, to you, to you. Thank you, Jesus. Blessings and glory. They all, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing. For blessing me. Hallelujah. Come on and thank Jesus for blessing you. Hallelujah. Come on, give it all to him. Blessings, glory, and honor. They all belong to you, God. Yes, hallelujah is to you. We give you praise tonight. And that's why we say thank you, Jesus, for blessing us. Come on and give God praise. Come on. Come on, as we get in our study, if you got your books, get your books out. Get your Bible out because we are thanking Jesus tonight for all that he has done for us as we continue our study on praise. Come on and give God glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing us. Come on, come on, come on, everybody that's watching, come on and give God glory and say, thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I dare you to type that in the chat. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Come on and give God glory one more time. Hallelujah, as we get into this word tonight. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All right, let's get into this word. Let's get into this word. And again, we are in, I'm using this book as my guide and my basis for my study. Um, it is Miles Monroe, Rediscovering Kingdom Worship by Miles Monroe, Rediscovering Kingdom Worship. So um, if you want to get the book so you can go along with me, I'm in chapter five of the book right now, chapter five. And this particular chapter of the book is what is praise? What is praise? You know, a lot of times with this, um, this book, we're probably going to break this chapter down in a few sessions because a lot of times we think that we know what praise is. This is praise. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Or singing in the choir. That's praise. That, yeah, yeah, that's an expression of praise. That's one type of praise. That's the way we, but that is not exactly, that is not just defined praise. If somebody asks you what praise is, you can't just start clapping your hands and shouting. Yes, that is um, a way to praise God, but what are you actually doing? What are we actually doing when we clap our hands? What are we actually doing when we sing our songs? What are we actually doing when we say thank you, Jesus? What are we actually doing when we say hallelujah? So that's what I kind of want to deal with tonight and what chapter 5 deals with. Okay, it says, what is praise? It says, praise is celebrating God as our heart's true home. So praise is a way of celebrating God as our heart's true home. Let me get, give you some scripture that, that kind of goes into that. So our heart wants to live with God. So in order to get to that place, praise pushes us back home. Oh, I felt that. That might be a sermon topic for another day. Praise pushes us back home. And our home is glory to God in the heart of God. Okay, so 
All right. So the scriptures are filled with injunctions to praise the Lord. This says, um, so it, it tells us to praise the Lord or something that's pushing us, like pushing us back to the place where we be. Like I told you, the praise pushes us back home. It says, First Chronicles 29 and 20, it says, and it, David, it says, Then David said to the whole assembly, Praise the Lord your God. So they all praised the Lord, the God of their fathers. They bowed low and fell prostrate before the Lord and the king. Okay, another one in Psalms 106 and 1. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Okay, Psalms 113 and 1. If you want to go to find anything about praise, Psalms is your place to go. The book of Psalms is your place to go. It's a whole bunch of them, and it's full of praise. So if that's where you're trying to find you some praise scriptures, or you're just really getting into the scripture thing, go to Psalms if you want to learn more about praise. Psalms 113 and 1, it says, Praise the Lord, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalms 117 and 1, praise the Lord, all ye nations, extol him, all ye peoples. And then Psalms 150 and 6 was more familiar than to most people. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So if we are to obey these commands from God, we must first learn what praise is. Praise includes, and this is what we're going to deal with, praise includes commending, expressing approval or favorable judgment of, and glorifying, especially by crediting with perfections. So we're going to talk about commending, how we commend God, how we express our approval or favorable judgment, and also how we glorify him, okay? Oh, that's what we're going to deal with tonight. That's what we're going to deal with tonight. Amen. And then we're going to, next week, we're going to deal with some characteristics of praise. That's why I need you to join each week. So if you haven't shared, like I told you early on, go ahead and share this with somebody. Tell them, like, you need to learn more about praise. We need to get, we need to, you need to be my praise partner. So I'm going to share this with you right now so that you can get this word from pastor. So the first thing we're going to talk about is commending. How do we commend God through our praise? So it says to commend someone is to entrust for care or perseverance preservation, or to recommend as worthy of confidence or notice, to commend. That comes from Webster's, Dic Webster's Dictionary. To entrust for care or to recommend as you having a worthy confidence in someone. So, um, Miles Monroe said, praising God by commendation thus means that we entrust ourselves to his care and recommend that others do the same. Glory to God. So, you know, we um, um, the song is a little quartet song. I'm in your care. So, Father God, I, we put our trust in him. Like the acronym for faith is F-I-A-T-H, forsaking all, I trust him. So when we see, sometimes we feel like all this, that's the only expression. Your faith, glory to God, is an expression of praise. You've got to know that your faith is an expression of praise because as you're putting your trust in him, you are commending, you are praising God by letting him know, God, I trust you with my life. Hallelujah. I trust you with my health. I trust you with my situation. Yeah, that's, that's praise, trusting God. Having faith, that's a sign. That, that, that is a way that we praise God. Glory to God. The same, David, David put his trust in him. David was the, 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 the originator, not the originator, but David was the one who taught us how to praise him. But, and he put all of his trust fully in God. And you learned about his trust through his praise anthems. Hallelujah. Through his prayers, through his laments, through his praise offerings to God. We learned that he trusted in the Lord. Glory to God. So it says the Psalms of David in particular are filled with te testimonies of the Lord's trustworthiness. God is he's a trustworthy person. He will never let you down. Glory to God. And with expressions of confidence that he will gain, excuse me, he will again prove himself trustworthy. He's not just trustworthy on one occasion. Hallelujah. If he did it before, I've come to tell you tonight, he will do it again. You can promise yourself, hallelujah, that God will 
fulfills his promise. Go over and say that one more time. You can promise yourself that God will fulfill his promises. I'm making a promise to myself off of somebody else's promise because I know that the promise that I'm standing on is a good one. Hallelujah. He is trustworthy that he will not let me down. Glory to God. It's also it, to, to commend means that, that we entrust ourselves to his care and we also recommend that Others do the same thing. And so as as that's like if you have somebody to come and care for a loved one or or, or, or or somebody that takes care of you once you don't need that person's services no more, if they do a good job, you will recommend, glory to God, them to somebody else, hallelujah, so that they can receive the same care that you receive in your time of need. And that's not like we're saying that we don't need God no more. We still need him, but when we recommend him, we're letting people know this is what he has done for me, and I bet he is still keeping me. And if you try him for yourself, you will just see how good God is. That's like you recommending your favorite restaurant. Somebody might not have gone there before. You say, well, I went there last week and, I, and I'm here to tell you, baby, that food was good. If you go there, I'm, you trust me. If you trust me that I'm your friend, if you trust me, you know me, you know I'm not going to tell you to go somewhere or to do something that I haven't tried myself. And so when we praise God and we, we, when we commit ourselves to, to showing people that we love God and, and telling people just how good we he is, we are commending him to let him know that if he's good enough to do that for me, baby, with my jacked up self, he can do it for you. So you ought to try him for yourself. That's our expression of praise. That's an expression of praise. So let's look at some of the Psalms where David shows his trust, that he has put his trust in God. Um, Psalms 7 and 1, it says, O oh Lord, my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all that persecute me and deliver me. Okay, he goes over a couple more um, books. He says, Psalms 9 and 10, he says, Those who know your name will trust in you. For you, O oh Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. You're not messing with that. These are not praise songs. Yes, they are. These are an expression of trust and faith in God. Psalm 16 and 1. Preserve me, hallelujah, O oh God, for in all thee, for in thee I do put my trust. Take care of me, God, because I put my trust in you. Glory to God. And then Psalms 20 and 7, even one of my favorite scriptures, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we trust, glory to God, in the name of our God. So this is a declaration. This is David right here. He was telling people, y'all put y'all trust in this stuff over here. Y'all put y'all trust in these manly things, these man-made things. You put your trust in things that don't have any power, but I'm going to put... My trust in the Lord, because I know who got power. Glory to God. I know who has strength. I know who has the ability to do what I need for him to do. I know who will not let me down. So when I say, Lord, I trust you, that's the same thing as me clapping my hands and say, hallelujah. Lord, I, I got faith in you. That's the same thing as me saying, thank you, Jesus. That is an expression of my praise. Glory to God. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise by commendation thus applies the promises of God to our personal circumstances. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It says, let's say, for example, that a father just lost his job, and he will, he's concerned how he will provide for his family. Perhaps his heart is heavy and is feeling overwhelmed by the future his praise of God in such a situation might go something like this. And it, it gives us a, 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 a prayer guide or a model praise God that we can say to God to show him praise through our trust in him. It says, Lord God, you are my provider. I praise you. Somebody ought to give him glory. For I know that you care for me and you care for my family. Hallelujah. You might need to get this book because this might need to be something you have to read for yourself and declare it and put your praise out there in the atmosphere. You are the God who cares 
even for the sparrows, and I know that my wife, my children, and I are worth much more to you than the sparrows are. Therefore, I choose not to, huh, glory to God, to worry. That's an expression of praise. When you say, I choose not to worry. Instead, I will boast of your goodness to us in the past, for there have been other times. Hallelujah. Father God, when you we, we, we didn't know how we were going to pay our bills yet. Glory to God. This might be somebody's testimony who's watching. Yet you have always made a way even when there seemed to be no way. So God, I thank you for your goodness. Hallelujah. Thank you for your, for your care and your provision. I know that I can trust in you. Can somebody say that tonight as a praise? I know, God, I can trust in you. Lord, it's in you that I put my trust. God, I know that your eyes are always on my family, and God, you will not forget us. God, I thank you that you're always watching over me. God, I thank you that I'm always on your mind. Even as you provided food for your people as they wandered through the wilderness, the wilderness today, I declare by faith that you will provide for us. You got to commend God. You got to tell Him, God. I know what you have done in the past. I know what you have done in the, for others. I've seen it for myself. I heard about it. So today I put my trust in you. That's my expression of praise because I know if you did it for them, if you provided for them, you will provide for us too. When you put your trust in God, that is saying, God, I know that I'm no different than the other people. I'm no different than that person over there. So God, I trust if you did it for them, that's a sign that you are still working miracles. So therefore, I can believe that you will do it for me. And I say thank you. Let me stop. I'm about to start preaching. Glory to God. And I say thank you. You alone are my refuge. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are saved. Glory to God. I choose not to be shaken. I noble shy by fear. You alone are the source of all I have and ever hope to have. I praise you because you are faithful. We serve a faithful God. You are the everlasting one. I know that you are aware of what we are going through. And I thank you in advance for what you will do for us. To your name be the glory today, hallelujah, tomorrow, next week, and next month in my life. I praise you and I honor you. You are my God. Let's commend God. Let's commend God. Let's put our trust in him, our total trust in him. Let's put ourselves in God's care and then recommend that others do the same. So you got to make sure when God does something for you, you just don't sit on that. That your, your, your testimony. Let people know that God is a way maker. Let people know that God is a healer. Let people know that God is a provider because they might be looking for somebody to make a way. Oh, I recommend Jesus. Glory to God. They might be looking for somebody to heal their body, but I, I recommend Jesus. They might be looking for somebody to lift up their head. I recommend Jesus. Because he's the one. Glory to God. Somebody shout, he's the one. Somebody shout, I trust him because he's the one. Yes, he is. So I commend God. That is my expression of praise. Commending him. I recommend. I recommend Jesus. Hallelujah. That's another So I recommend Jesus. When was the last time you recommended him to somebody? Yes, yes, yes. Uh-huh. I'm in your business now. When was the last time you recommended him to somebody? Glory to God. So not only um, our praise includes commending, our praise includes expressing approval or favorable judgment. All right? Webster's Dictionary says to approve of someone is to have or express a favorable opinion of him or show esteem. Personal experience is at heart of this expression as well. Here again, David in the Psalms. He contains numerous examples of his personal experience of approval toward God. Part of your praise is your personal experience of your approval of what God has done in your life. Psalms 10 and 14. Like I told you, Psalms are going to be the basis of a lot of this, the, these, these teachings on praise. It says, but you, O oh God, do see trouble and grief. You consider it to take it at hand. The victim commits himself to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. This, this is what, this is not, your praise is most of the time not what you heard, but what you experienced for yourself. Hallelujah. I, 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 I praise God for others, but most of the time my praise is what God has done for me. Glory to God. 
Psalms 59 and 16 says, but I will sing of your strength in the morning. I will sing of your love, for you are my fortress, my refuge in times of trouble. And then Psalm 63, 1 and 2. You can always go back, and after you finish watching it, go back so you can write these scriptures down. Psalm 63, 1 and 2. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly, uh, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. So you see, praise is approving, praise by approving is turning our thoughts toward God. Turning. We got to turn our thoughts toward God. I don't know. Our focus gets off. But it's time to turn it back towards God. We weren't focusing on these things, but I, I, I praise by, uh, by, uh, by, 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 by um, approving uh, of God. It uh, just shows us that our focus now is back on him. We, we, we're turning our thoughts toward God, and we're remembering how he has won our claim. So that means that, that he's basically saying here, we are remembering how God did it for us, hallelujah, how God did it for us, how, how, we, how God did it in such a way we realized that it was nobody but God. Some things happen in our life that we believe that we're so big and bad that we were able to do it on our own strength, but we, it was God all the time, always working behind the scenes, but it gets to a point in our life where we, where we, get, we, we realize that it was God who did it, and so we are remembering it was God that did it. Hallelujah. It was God that saved me. It was God that healed me. It was God that delivered me. I remember. I don't have amnesia. Glory to God. There's nothing wrong with my mind. I, I remember. Glory to God. The goodness of I remember when I was in a mess who pulled me out. I remember when I was going through who helped me through. It was God. Lord, it was you. I remember. It was you. I remember what he has done in my life. It's also reciting. Hallelujah. Recite the wonder of who he is and how he has made a difference in our life and the life to others. Reciting means you are telling, retelling, reciting something that you have read or something that's in your mind. When you recite a poem, you're reciting it from memory. Most of the time you recite it from memory. That means you have read it. That means you have numerous times. You have looked over it numerous times. Now it's in your mind so you can just recite it. People, um, there's certain scriptures I can just recite. I can't recite the whole Bible. I ain't got there at that point yet. But there's certain scriptures I can recite about different subjects because I they're in my mind, they're in my heart, in my spirit. So after God has done stuff for you, there should be some stuff that's in your mind that you can recite, that you can just come off on. When people tell you, well, can you tell me what God has done for you? Yes, I can because I, I recite it. I, 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 I go over it in my mind daily, the blessings of the Lord that he has done in my life because he's been so good to me. I got so much in there, it would take me all day to tell you all that God has done for me. Somebody ought to give God glory for that. It says many scriptures do this. But Psalms 23 is perhaps the most well-known passage of scripture that is a personal recommendation for God. David praises God by describing him as the shepherd who cares for him. His sheep. David is part of the sheep and God is the shepherd that cares for him. Each image from the life and the work of a shepherd in some ways speaks to David of God's work in his life. David is showing through what he says in Psalms 23 how he approved that the Lord is his shepherd. And because he's his shepherd, he shall not want. Hallelujah. And so that, that, that's showing David's approval and letting the people know I am praising my shepherd. Because he takes care of me. I am, I'm letting you know that it, if I'm in his care, I don't want for anything. And you know how the rest of the Psalm 23 go. And we're going to, after that, during the summertime, when we get to the summer, we're spending the summer with the shepherd. So I'm going to break down Psalms 23 over the summer. That's going to be our Bible, to, Bible study and sermon topics over the summer. We're spending a summer with the shepherd. So we're, we're um, David wants us to know just how much he approves of God. And it's not like God needs our approval. He doesn't need our approval. But man, if, so, if, there, if there's somebody in the earth that needs to see us, needs to hear us, telling people about God, turning our hearts back to our, our hearts and our thoughts, remembering, reciting, and describe. 
So it, we, it, we, we turn our thoughts toward him. We remember how he has won our claim. God, is a, God has never been defeated. Hallelujah. He, gives, he wins every time. And we're reciting the wonder of who he is and we're describing who he is in our life. And, then, and so Psalms 23, we can use that in praise and worship. You know, sometimes they, that was a, that's a favorite um, funeral scripture. But Psalms 23 is a, 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 a praise and worship scripture because it, it shows the praise of God and the worship of who he is. So remember that. When, and then in times of praise and worship, you've got to, you, there's, there's just not certain scriptures you can go to. Any scripture that's showing trust, approval, and, and, and just how good God is, that's a praise and worship scripture. Even, even Miles Monroe, he, and I believe he, I, I learned this in my first reading of this some years ago. He says right here, many scriptures that don't use the words associated with praise, words like thank, sing, honor, or worship can be used in this manner, can be used for praise and worship. Why this? They record glimpses of someone's favorable opinion of God. That's praise. Glimpses that invite us to praise him as well by expressing our approval of him and our gratitude for his grace and mercy shown to us throughout our life. In essence, praise that approves is like writing a letter of recommendation for God. And so, and when I was a CDF, that was a career development um, facilitator, and even now as a teacher, students ask me, glory to God, <laughs> to write them letters of recommendation for different things that they're doing. But when sometimes if I don't know the student that well, I have to ask them, you got to give me some stuff to put in this letter. And if I know the student real well and depend on what it is, I'm going to tell them I can't write you this letter because I can't tell lies. <laughs> I'm not going to write a letter and write a letter full of lies to get you into something when I know that's not what you are capable of doing or the things that you say that you did. I know that you don't do them. So I can't recommend you because that's not what you have done. But guess what? That's not the case with God. I don't have to ask God, ooh, hallelujah, to tell me what he's done. I don't have to ask God to give me some things to write about when I'm writing a letter of recommendation to him or I'm singing a letter of recommendation or I'm telling somebody how he is. I know what he's done. I've seen it for myself because he's done it for me. I got a whole record in my mind, in my praise bank, in my, in my faith bank, in my trust bank of just what God has done for me. I know times are hard right now. I know you are struggling. I know you are dealing with something, but you still got something you can recommend God for. How do I know? Because you're still here. And guess what? You can recommend him. Oh, glory to God as a keeper. You can recommend him as a provider. You can recommend him as a way maker because he's doing it for you right now. He's doing it for you right now. So you can recommend him. Glory to God. So commending expressing our approval or favorable judgment and glorifying. I'm talking about this and I'm going to stop for the night and I'll pick back up with the characteristics of praise next week. So that means you got to turn in, you got to tune in next week to get all of this. I pray that you are, 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 are enjoying this and I pray that you share this. Share, share the word with people. This is our way of evangelizing during this virtual time. We can't really get together and talk to people like we normally do. So by sharing words, sharing scriptures, sharing sermons, sharing Bible studies, sharing songs with people, that's how you evangelize to them. Let them know about the God. You're recommending Jesus. So make sure you share this tonight. And so glorify. And that's how that's what that, that's, that's the way we praise God. It says to glorify someone is to bestow honor, praise, or admiration. In other words, giving glory to someone specifically identifies what is admirable in this person. Bestow honor means to give him what is due to him. Uh huh. So this type of praise is quite frequent in the scriptures. God is recognized as being good. That's Psalms 34 and 8. God is recognized as being faithful in Psalms 33 and 4. God is recognized as being righteous in Psalms 1, excuse me, Psalms 11 and 7. God is recognized as being just in 2 Chronicles 12 and 6. And in Daniel 9 and 9, he's recognized as being merciful and forgiving. That's just to name a few of the admirable characteristics of God. In addition, God, his dwelling place, his law, his character, and his actions are described as being perfect and flawless. There's a few scriptures. 2 Samuel 22 and 31. 2 Samuel 
22 and 31. It says, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. His, he is a shield for all who take refuge in him. Psalms 19 and, and 7 says, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Isaiah 24 and 1, O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name for in perfect faithfulness. Glory to God. You have done marvelous things, things that were planned long ago. And Matthew 5 and 48 says, Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And then James 1 and 17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Glory to God, glory to God. Psalms 103 in particular is a good example of scripture that glorifies God. In this psalm, David lists some of the many praiseworthy benefits of knowing God, and God forgives our sin, and how God forgives our sin. Amen. And you can turn to that one. It's about 22 verses, and it goes through. Um, and I'm going to read just, um, I'm going to read down to verse 12. It says, praise the Lord, O my soul. This is Psalms 103. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all of our sins and heals all of your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not accuse, always accuse, nor he will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as sin, as our sin deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. Oh, that's a good place to shout right there. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. Hallelujah. So David, he lists some of the many praiseworthy benefits of God. The praiseworthy things, things to admire about him, things that we can glorify, things that we can put the spotlight on. Hallelujah. When we glorify, we put the we lift him up so others can see. Put the spotlight on it and 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 and, and, and we, we we shine it up. Hallelujah. We shine it up. We put a shine on it. We put a shine on it so that, that the people can see the glory. People can see the shine. People can see the power of God. Hallelujah. God, verse 3 tells us that God forgives us of our sins and he heals our diseases. Glory to God. He, he Okay, verse 4 tells us that he crowns us with, no, excuse me. Then verse 4 says he redeems our life. He saves our life from the pit. From that pit that you in, God saved you. God picked you up out of that mess. He crowns us with love and compassion. That's also in verse 4. He satisfies us with good things. Hallelujah. I thank everything that happened to me that was good. God did it. Hallelujah. I thank you that he satisfies me. He quenches my thirst with good things. Hallelujah. He works righteousness and justice for the oppressed. He, he's looking out for the underdog. Hallelujah. He is slow to anger. That's a good place to praise him. And he does not always accuse. God does not always find you guilty. He does not always come down on you like some of us always automatically feel like somebody is guilty of something. God does not do that. He does not keep his anger forever. Quit being mad at people forever. If you say you are like God, then that, that's not a part of your praise by being angry at somebody. He does not treat us as our sin deserves. That's because of Jesus, hallelujah, because our sin should kill us. But we thank God for his grace and his mercy. See, David was prophesying because he knew that the Savior was coming. And he removes our transgressions from us. I thank God for the blood of Jesus that wipes us clean. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. See, so, so you got to look at this, and th David is glorifying. He's bringing to light. He, he is admiring the qualities and letting people know all this good stuff about God. This is a praise. He is letting people know just how good his God is. This is a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
And I'm going to end on this. It says, another way we honor God is to recite his name or other designations of who he is. It says, for example, the Lord is a warrior. The Lord is God in heaven above and on the earth there is no other. The Lord is my life. The hand of the Lord is powerful. The Lord is peace. The Lord is a God who knows and by him deeds are weighted. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. The Lord is king. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of his people. All this come out of the word of God. It says as we honor God for who he is and for what he has done in our lives, we make room for him. Yes, yes. We make room for him to work for us and in us every day. We give him a place to dwell in the midst of our lives because we refuse to take his benefits to us for granted. We know we are sinners saved by grace and we give him the glory for saving us and for being there for us when we need him. We glorify God. We commend him and we express our approval to God. So this is just basically showing us Praise is more than clapping our hands. Praise is more than hallelujah. Praise is more than shouting. Praise is putting our trust in him. Praise is having faith in him. Praise is letting people know just what he has done for you. Praise is admiring the glorious benefits, of the glorious qualities of God. And we're going to deal with some more of that next week as we learn the characteristics of praise. So I pray that you are being blessed by this study. And again, get this book. If you don't have it yet, get this book. Again, it's by Miles Monroe. And it was a USA Day Today bestseller. It says, Rediscovery, excuse me, I can't even talk. Rediscovering Kingdom Worship, the purpose and power of praise and worship. We want more power in this house. I want more power in this church. So as this study and though I, I pray and, you know, I, sometimes I get frustrated with people not getting on and I pray frustrated uh, sometimes when, like, I, I believe some more of the church members should get on and watch. And, and so, but God says those who want it will get it. Hallelujah. Those who want it will get it. And, 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 and they will take it and they will put it in action. And the kingdom of God will be glorified by those who tune in and to get this word. And I pray others will join in as we continue to study about praise and we can see to learn about the purpose and power of praise and worship because that is a part of our lives. Amen. So continue to join in. Make sure you watch, join in on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. for our live worship service here uh, via Facebook. Uh, we will, first Sunday in Easter. It's coming real soon. First Sunday in Easter, we will begin our outdoor worship service. Amen. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. We will begin our outdoor worship services the first Sunday in Easter outside in our parking lot here at Cedar Creek at 1130 a.m. So um, remember, there's a new time, 1130 a.m. Come on out and we will worship our resurrected Savior that Sunday morning. So starting the first Sunday in April, I believe that is April 4, April 4th. Join us for our Easter worship outdoor service here at Cedar Creek Community Church. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for uh, spending some time with your pastor. I love you guys, and I just can't wait until this, all this stuff go away so that we can get together and I can hug on you and love on you like we used to. But please know that I'm praying for you. Please know that I love you. Please know that I, I, I'm truly praying that God is continuing to bless you just like I know he always will. Let us pray as we dismiss. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. Thank you for this word. Thank you for the prayer. Thank you for the song, God. I just pray that whatever I spoke tonight moves on the hearts of the people, God. I pray that you were pleased with these words, and I pray that you were pleased with that you are pleased with our praise, God. So, God, I thank you tonight for continuing to love me. I thank you tonight for continuing to take care of us, God. I thank you for continuing to protect us, God. Continue to be God, and we will continue to tell people just how good you are. We will continue to recommend you to others. We will continue to show that we love you, that we approve you, hallelujah.
hallelujah, not because you need it, but for people to know that we are happy what you are doing in our life, and we glorify you, God. There are so many wonderful things about you, and we want everybody to know just how good you are. So thank you, God. Continue to keep us, continue to bless us, God, whatever it is, again, that we need, God. We say, Lord, do it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Heal us, deliver us, save us, God, right now in the name of Jesus, and we thank you and we praise you until we meet again. It is so it is well and it's already done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Somebody give God glory. Hallelujah. I love you guys. Be blessed and see you on Sunday morning here on Facebook. Bye-bye.